resolved. This house believes that a society with more competitive debating would be better off. That is today's motion. My name is Haji Mansour, a debater, orator, junior debate trainer, and adjudicator in training. I've had many opportunities to participate in a multiplicity of debate competitions, some of which include the Africa Open Schools Debate Championships, which happen to be Tanzania's biggest, the Mwali Munyerere Invitationals, and even the World Schools Debate Championships, where I participated as part of the Tanzanian national debate team. But also, I've had the chance to go back to my previous school, which happens to be a public school, teach debating, and have my students be some extremely successful Tanzanian debaters who went on to intimidate the Tanzanian debating community and win competitions. Essentially, what I'm trying to say is I have experience with debate and I've seen what it could be. And that's why I'm here today to share with you this dream. Some of you will notice throughout the speech that it shall resemble somewhat that of a debater's. And with that said, after the historical context, on to characterization. So, what is competitive debating? It is a sport, a mind sport, if you will. It has some features which do distinguish it from many other activities that look like it, such as it has a clear structure with defined rules based on the format of debate, which instructs someone when to speak and when not to, when to rebuttal and when not to, when to intervene and when not to. But secondly, requires substance and substantiation that when you claim something, it is not enough. You must back it up with logical analysis. But then again, that's also not enough. You need to provide an elaboration for why that is at all important. Finally, most debate formats require immense amounts of team effort for you to amount to anything in the art. And these are able to distinguish competitive debating from the petty squabbles and typical verbal fights that we have in day-to-day -day life about Nicki Minaj versus Cardi B or whatever other petty squabbles we have in daily life. But I still find that there is a need to distinguish between competitive debating and other activities like Model United Nations, MUN. See, the key difference is that po competitive debating focuses on the point of contention. That moment, that place where we begin to disagree for example, we can all agree that Messi and Cristiano Ronaldo are the best footballers in the world. We start to disagree when determining who is the GOAT, the greatest of all time. Now, I swiftly move away from this example before I start hearing sues from the audience. So, fundamentally, well, one tries to reach a compromise by resolving issues and finding common ground. The other tries to evaluate and examine the two alternatives and determine which one outweighs the other. You see, my stance is that debate inculcates the grandest of skills. And what, what is particularly exceptional is the manner in which that happens. Now, after I give you <coughs> what skills and in what manner they are imparted into people, let's visualize what society would look like if these uh, skills in competitive debating were more widespread. Let's dream, in fact, Let's daydream, as T.E. Lawrence once said, 
Dreamers of the day are dangerous men, for they may act their dreams with open eyes to make it possible. Hopefully, with our dreaming, we will one day. So what then are the significant skills and how they are thus uniquely obtained? I would like to stress that these skills are not particularly rare in themselves. So don't expect me to talk about verbal plasma rays or the ability to give out super sharp adjectives. It would not be remiss of someone to believe that that is something that one may obtain from competitive debating, but it's not one of the best skills that I would like to talk about today. So what I would like to talk about is, one, critical thinking, critical thinking skills. Put simply, it is to think rationally, trying to connect ideas and all facts together to form coherent conclusions. It is the object of desire by many in society, by businesses from its would-be employees, by nations from its leaders, and even by history from its would-be greats. But critical thinking takes time and effort to become a critical thinker worth the name. Competitive debating accelerates that process. Being put in a situation where you have to debate an impromptu motion with little context and little time, but come up with an entire case that anticipates all of the opposition's engagement, and yet you find debaters come in with logically coherent eight minute long speeches. That is absolutely no simple task. It reminds me that in my very first sessions of debating, Dominic Mwakifulefule, the head of TCRO, Tanzania Competitive Rhetoric Organization, which is basically what brought debating, competitive debating to Tanzania, he said, if there were ever to be a perfect synonym for debating, it would be critical or independent thinking. Just imagine how decision making and problem solving in society would be revolutionized if we were to be involved in this art more. Two, listening skills. See, in whatever format of debate, people have limited time to say the most meaningful things that they can. They will speak fast, but to the pace of human adjudication. Still, people must listen very carefully. They need to listen to identify the point of contention, the arguments, their mechanisms, and where they fall short. Essentially, debate is about engaging with what the other side has said. So if you don't listen, you don't get to do that, and therefore you fail. So Winston Churchill once said, courage is what it takes to stand up and speak. Courage is also what it takes to sit down and listen. How many debaters do this every day they have to learn to be courageous enough to sit down and listen. How courageous then are you, dear audience, by sitting down here and listening? And how courageous would society be if they were more well-versed in this art of debating that forces them to be more courageous to listen on a daily basis? Thirdly, connected to what I have previously said, is open-mindedness. The ability to be willing to acknowledge, hear, and think of multiple perspectives. You see, a debater is inundated with many different motions daily. 
among which they will eventually land on motions that they either are indifferent to or categorically against. But they must put themselves in other people's shoes at the end of the day. Just imagine a society that is well-versed in this. Imagine the tolerance that this society would be capable of. And imagine how our world would be better with such kind of tolerance. But then I have told you that these skills are not particularly rare and they're obtainable in many other activities. So why then do I believe that um, it is preferable to obtain them in competitive debating? I have like three particular reasons. One, competition. I think current society has forgotten the significance of competition and its effects on human development. You see, Marxism, whether you agree with it or not, remains to be one of the most logical, compelling theories in the world today. And put simplistically, it refers to human competition as the major agent of human change throughout history. But two, passion. As long as competitive debate is not forced among people, I believe it has the tendency to evoke a level of passion that is so significant in people. Well, add to that the fact that it involves constant physical practice. I believe it has the ability to inculcate these skills that people get in individuals unlike any other activity. But finally, the capacity to form unique social ties. You see, debating is not devoid of cooperation. It requires teamwork immensely to be able to obtain the best outcomes. And unlike most friendships that we're accustomed to, debating creates friendships that are based on the very things that ruin other friendships. It's based on friendships that argue a lot, that battle it out on a constant basis, more than what is even frequent. So to be formed on the very thing that other friendships are ruined over, you'd find that these social ties created from debating are in fact unique. But then it's, all, it's not all blue skies and rainbows. We must acknowledge that there are some things that will go amiss. And I can identify two particular ones. One, that there shall be contrarians in society, the devil advocates, the one who just wish to debate anything for the sake of it. However shall society be able to reach a decision when we have such people? Imagine the length to which a problem could, uh, the length of time to which a problem could be solved with these people in society. And to be honest, I cannot say to what extent this problem will be huge. I cannot say if it shall exist to a significant extent at all. Neither can many people who share my dream. But I find that in such uncertainty, I reflect over Joseph Joubert's words when he says, it is better to, quest it is better to debate a question without settling it then settle a question without debating it. And finally, the question upon how can we go get closer to this dream? I, th I think there's many ways. I think one way we could start is by acknowledging other people in society, other people in history who've had a debate experience, who've had a debate history particularly ones that have become examples to society.
Margaret Thatcher, who remains to be one of the best orators in man's history, had a debate history, something that most people are not told. Nelson Mandela was someone who was deeply involved in debating in college. Or even Malcolm X, who joined his prison debating program. But then again, we also have the likes of Oprah Winfrey and Adam Sandler in high school and college, something that most people are unaware of. You see, I also find that we need to get more people into debating. This could be done by having government funding for public school children to be able to participate more in debating. Or we could have corporate corporations supporting debaters and the debate dream. Something else is we could try to have more debate competitions in society. Finally, there's a lot of people going, oh, this dream is too utopian. It's absolutely unachievable. But I dare you to dream. And honestly, the very thing that comes into my mind is what Dominic Mwakifule Fule once said in his speeches. He says, I think it's time to start questioning the narrative. Thank you.